Wild deer became part of the fauna of the Northern Hemisphere during the first glacial period of the Ice Age. This means that the species is at least 650,000 years old. The wild deer of that time is the same species as the current tundra reindeer, mountain reindeer, wild forest reindeer, semi-domesticated reindeer, and the caribou living in North America. The modern name for the wild deer that once lived in the Finnish wilderness is Rangifer tyrandus fenicus, or deer of Finland. What is surprising is that the wild forest reindeer and semi-domesticated reindeer lived side by side for up to 200 years in the wilderness areas of Lapland until the wild forest reindeer were all hunted out. The last wild forest reindeer in Finland lived in the 1920s near the eastern border, south of the reindeer husbandry area in Kuhmo. This is also the place where the last wild forest reindeer of Finland is believed to have been shot. The reason for this was the rapid growth of the population in Finland. More and more people needed to be fed, and at that time hunting was still one of the only ways to get food. The wild forest reindeer was widely believed to have disappeared entirely from the ecosystem of Finland. But a miracle occurred. At the end of the 1940s, tracks of the wild forest reindeer, which were thought to have died out, were discovered near the eastern border in Kuhmo. The new arrivals originated from behind the border from the wilderness areas of Russian Karelia, which had been home to a strong population of wild forest reindeer the entire time. Living on the winter taigas, the wild forest reindeer is one of those taiga animals that are not bothered by thick snow and icy coldness. The wild forest reindeer is one of the best examples of animals that do well in the northern coniferous forests. Wild forest reindeer survive the winter by eating reindeer lichen. The reindeer get them from the lichen fields of pine forests and from sides of ridges. Guided by their precise sense of smell, they find lichen even through thick snow cover from just the right place. Thus, energy is not wasted on traveling and digging. With the return of the wild forest reindeer and also with the increased numbers of moose, the wilderness is getting another original inhabitant, the wolf. Wolves, in turn, keep the reindeer population healthy and vigilant. Another animal that benefits from the remains of reindeer killed by wolves is the wolverine, which is one of the most endangered predators in Europe. The coexistence of growing numbers of large predators and wild forest reindeer is not always without problems. The relationship between wolves and prey, wild forest reindeer and moose, 
has been upset by the changes in habitats, such as the cutting of old forests and the drying and cultivation of bogs. There are no longer expansive wilderness forests and bogs available. Due to the way in which humans use the land, predators and prey end up living in the same fragmented areas and wild forest reindeer become prey to predators more and more frequently. The wild forest reindeer population of Kainu was depleted by the combined effect of predators and work carried out to ensure the purity of the breed which involved removing hybrids of semi-domesticated and wild reindeer, as well as wild forest reindeer that regularly entered the reindeer husbandry area. Other factors include traffic and wild forest reindeer that still disappear into Russia. It is typical of wild forest reindeer to migrate to winter pastures in the autumn and back to summer pastures in the spring. In Finland, migrations of wild forest reindeer are limited to just over 100 kilometers compared to the migrations of its fellow species in North America, the caribou, which migrate thousands of kilometers. In the middle parts of pristine bogs, Moist areas and the first melting points provide welcome nutrition after the winter lichen. At the end of May, the bogs open up for good and shoots of cotton grass are great delicacies of the wild forest reindeer at this time of year. Females drop their antlers only after calving. The antlers are not a weapon of defense against stronger predators. Rather, they are needed at their feeding craters when driving off the larger males from their food source. The calf of a wild forest reindeer stands on its feet in as little as 15 minutes after it is born. A calf that is a few hours old is already able to run unsteadily, and by the next day it is able to follow its mother to pasture lands. While the mother feeds, the calf sucks milk from it every two or three hours, but then gradually begins to use plant nutrition. In October, the true rutting or mating season of males begins. Males get a new momentum during that time. The autumn rutting season is a true trial of strengths for males. They must continuously try to herd and keep as many females in their harem as possible and keep suitors away. Wild forest reindeer once stayed viable behind our eastern border. Now the reindeer faced the threat of extinction in those areas. In 2013, new information was acquired about the situation of the wild forest reindeer of Karelia in a joint Finnish and Russian wild forest reindeer project. The population and current range of the wild forest reindeer of Karelia were determined based on flight counts. Based on the results, the conclusion was made that the population of Karelia is in decline and no more reindeer can be expected from the Russian side into Finland. Action was taken in time to protect wild forest reindeer in Finland. Reintroduction to Suomenselka in the 1970s is a great example of the ability of humans to take care of our native animals.
The hybridization of wild and semi-domesticated reindeer has been prevented with a reindeer fence that is about 100 kilometers long on the southern edge of the reindeer husbandry area. Additionally, efforts have been made to remove semi-domesticated reindeer and possible hybrids from the wild forest reindeer area. The future looks reasonably bright for the wild forest reindeer, but work must be done continuously on its behalf. The wild forest reindeer should be allowed to spread widely to its former living ranges to the extent that is possible. The future of this noble native animal is in our hands.